We're heading down to the Las Vegas Convention Center to Pizza Expo, where Chef Leo Spaziri is cooking pizza while being interviewed by Peter Reinhardt. Out of this, I made a sauce, okay? I used uh, creme fraiche, egg yolks, a little bit of coriander, and white pepper, okay? So I'm gonna use this coriander sauce as my base, and then what I started here, let me show you this. Leo, is the coriander a seed or the fresh coriander leaf? So what I did was I actually got it ground because I uh, I was in a pinch here in Las Vegas. So I actually went and got it. It's organic. Uh, so it's the seeds, the ground seeds. Yes. So here's what I got. So again, you can get this anywhere. It's not very expensive. Uh, coriander has its own flavor. It's, it's got a very special flavor. You do see it a lot in French cooking. Um, so what I did here uh, this morning, I chopped about four white onions. And uh, I put them very simply with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. I put them on a sheet pan, and I stuck it in the wood-fired oven here for about, uh, probably about 10 minutes. I turned it, I got a little bit of color on these onions. Basically, they're just translucent. I don't want to cook them too long, because you got to remember, we're going to cook this once more inside the oven on top of the pizza, okay? I also took some smoked bacon. I cut it into these big chunks, all right? These are called lardons, fancy French word. This is chunks of bacon, okay? The other thing I like... And you could use bacon or pancetta. I like, you know, you could do pancetta also. Traditionally, though, you know, the black don, it's, uh, you know, staying with French, you know, we're, we're not going to use pancetta. It's more an Italian thing, uh, pancetta. So, so uh, and of course, here in the States, you can't ever go wrong with bacon. No, right? absolutely not. And another trick, and I try to tell people this as much, and especially when we talk about food costs and not wasting anything in the restaurant, okay? When you roast this bacon, you make these lardons, don't throw that bacon grease away, okay? There's so much flavor inside of this rendered bacon fat that what I want to do is actually, once we finish, once we uh, put this pizza in the oven, I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to cover the, the rim of the, uh, the pizza with a little bit of this bacon fat. So we're also going to incorporate the flavor of the bacon onto the crust of the pizza as well. Nice. And what are some other things that, that you know, you're going to have all this bacon fat in your pizzeria. What are some other things you can do with the bacon fat in, in other dishes or applications? So what, uh, one of the nice things about the bacon fat is that the you know bacon is smoked. So it'll actually add a smoky note to whatever you're adding it to. So you know those of you who uh, who like to do roasted garlic, you know you put a little bit of that bacon fat. It'll add that a little bit of that flavor to it. Uh, you know anytime you're going to do a little bit of saute, if it's something like uh, you know some mushrooms, you want to add a little bit of bacon and mushroom. It's such a classic combination. The smokiness goes so well with that. You're not going to overpower it with that, but it's another layer of flavor that you're incorporating. And all this bacon can be rendered right in the wood-fired oven. I did everything this morning inside the wood-fired oven. I don't have any other kitchen, so everything I do is right out of this oven. So let me get started. All you right. can uh, let's, let's put it all together. Yes. So we're making basically a French pizza. Uh, the French won't call it a pizza, though they'll call it what, what they're going to call it. So this is a tart, a flambe. A tart is a pie, right? Flambe, cooked in fire, also known as pizza. Right, so here we got a French version of pizza and a classic version, tart flambe. So, you pull the dough off first, then? Yeah. So what I did, um, so what I got here, my my dough, my dough is all the same. Okay, this is the same pizza dough that I'm using, but what it is is I've got a dough ball right here that's about 480 grams, which is about 16 ounces. I got a one-pound dough ball. It's basically proofed up very nicely, so you can see how much air is inside of here, okay? And you, uh, and you kind of preformed it into an, a long oblong. Yeah, because again, again uh, tart flambe is a rectangular pizza. It's very hard to make a rectangle out of a circle, you know? So what I like to do is I start this in the morning, or the day before, I form these logs, and then, you know, in the morning I get I give it about two hours, and then you can see how nice and, uh, and relaxed this is already. Another thing I like to do also, as long as you can see this, uh, I'll take any leftover pizza dough at night. I'll take it and I'll make these logs the same way. In the morning, let's say I wasn't going to make a flan fancy tart flambe. I could take this the way it is, score it a few times on top. Before I even light the oven, the residual heat of this oven, because of the way it's made, in the morning, after running 600, uh, 600 degrees, I walked in this morning, the oven was about 400 degrees. So without anything else, I clean the deck, I score up this bread, I put it inside the oven, close the door. After about 30 minutes, you're gonna have the most incredible artisan bread that you could offer your customers for bread service. This is never gonna be something you're gonna throw in the garbage. It's never gonna to go to waste, okay? Again, 
you're offering somebody something that they're not getting that experience somewhere else. You've got the Ferrari in the in-house. You might as well use it, right? So we're going to give you all the tools so that you can be successful doing this. So essentially, you're going to end up with something like a ciabatta or a rustic loaf of bread. A, a rustic loaf, and you just use pizza dough. But you have that extra day of fermentation on this, so you're getting those sour notes inside of it, right? That acidic note. And that's what everybody loves when you talk about good sourdough bread, you know? And you're also using the residual heat from the oven. While the oven is off, not costing you anything, costing it's, it's, it's creating bread for you that you're able to either give away or sell to your customers. That's right, that's right. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna degas this a little. We call this degassing when you actually knock some of the air out. And I'm gonna form a little bit of an edge, okay? I'm gonna turn this over, and I'm gonna do the same thing. In my, uh, in my test kitchen at home, I did these, uh, these focaccia in the same manner. I've got a good friend of mine who does a lot of, uh, a mo lot of mobile uh, demos. And he goes to the local farmer's market, and he shows up with a truck of bread before he even gets the fire lit. And what he's doing is he'll sell these focaccias long. He'll put tomatoes on here, he could put olives on here, stick it in the oven in the morning, same way, without even lighting the oven, pull them out, and all of a sudden you got this thing that's 24 inches long. He charges $12 for a pizza this size, and he does not have one left by the time he's ready to fire the oven. So he's making money before he even opens for business. Before you even open, again, using something that's free. The oven is made very well. So the bricks in here, this is something that's really important. The way the dome is made here, Forno Bravo spent a lot of money on making this technology on how to make these bricks, okay? This is commercial grade refractory stone. Now, when we talk commercial grade, this isn't the same the concrete that they're making driveways with, all right? This has got a polyfoam uh, interior. So what is what is this, what is this, uh, polyfiber, I'm sorry. Polyfiber is, uh, if we can uh, explain it, uh, in dough. We talk about a gluten network, okay? You've got this gluten holding the dough together and making it strong. What they did was they created this, uh, this network inside of the technology for the dome that this polyfiber holds it together really well. So what they actually did was, this is one of the only ovens that you're gonna see on the show floor that they're gonna tell you they'll guarantee the dome for the life of your restaurant. A lot of companies out here, they have red cars, okay? We're not talking Ferrari, we're talking red cars. These red, gar red cars will tell you, yeah, we'll give you a three to five year warranty on the, on the, on the dome itself. But again, this is a wood fired oven. The gas assist is an option, okay? We don't have the capability to run wood, so we're running gas. But one of the nice things, again, that we're gonna, we're gonna be doing with this is going into this oven that's already nice and hot. I'm gonna top this very simply, and it's gonna bake very, very quickly, okay? I'm gonna get going on this. All right, now it's assembly time. It's assembly time. So here's that, here's that coriander cream. You can see the beautiful color. Almost looks like vanilla, good vanilla ice cream, right? It's like so, a custard. What, so what's in that? So this is, uh, this is creme fraiche, egg yolks, white pepper, and coriander. Very simple, very French. So, and so the creme fraiche is, is kind of like a French sour cream. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit looser sour cream. Our, our, our American sour cream is a little more dense. And uh, again, this has this beautiful texture to it. What would be like the Italian equivalent of uh, creme fraiche? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the cheese, the, the maybe, it's not quite mascarpone. It's not. Um, I really don't know the uh, the Italian equipment to be honest. With you. Well, well, you could use mascarpone though if if, if you had you that could, already. You're you using it use, already. You could use mascarpone. When I uh, when I do stuff with ricotta, I always love to uh, to cut my uh, my ricotta with a little bit of mascarpone because you do get that creaminess. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making a, a thin layer. Of, uh, of this and this is plenty right now. So this is instead of tomato sauce, we're using this this beautiful this white cheese, sauce. this white sauce. Yeah. yeah. So now on top of here, I've got those onions that I started this morning in my uh, in my uh, Forno Bravo oven over here. This is good. So uh, let's finish. Not this. quite fully caramelized, just the beginning of caramelization on the ovens with some coriander seed. Yep, and, and then what other salt pepper? So this is just salt and pepper and olive oil inside of this. Now the tart flambe, this looks like it's a lot of onions, but the tart flambe, this is how it's served. And actually the tart flambe is served, you would, you would actually uh, shave the white onions and you would put them into the oven uh, uncooked. So this would cook inside the oven uh, before the, uh, let's say the bakers would make their bread. They would test the oven and the, uh, the oven temperature being ready. Uh, with this thing, and they have some breakfast, you know. Some and because, of course, that you're, you're cooking them and caramelizing them, they sweeten up, so you don't have that the burn that you would get from a raw onion. Absolutely. So now, so now what I got? I've got this bed of onions. Okay. We need some cheese, right? Right. Of course, we have a little cheese under, but that's in the form of your cheese sauce. So what I'm going to do again? I'm going to keep this French. 
I got a little bit of Gruyere, okay? I took some Gruyere, I shaved it right off a, a, a nice wedge. You know, this is imported. I think this is a, a Emmy, uh, Emmy, Emmy, I think Ross. it is. Yes. So, uh, so again, I'm gonna give this a little bit of Gruyere. Of course, Gruyere is also used for, uh, you know, for a lot of other things, like you, killer grilled cheese. You can, makes uh, a great fondue. Yeah, or, uh, you know, if you ever hit a French onion soup, this is the, uh, the cheese that's melted on top of the French onion. Okay. So I got my cheese, I got my onions, and now I'm gonna finish this up with these lardons. Who doesn't like bacon? You could already see, the, I, 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 I'm moving it out of my head already, just yeah. thinking about this. Yeah. The, the bacon-onion combination is it's just classic. That's right. So this is ready to go into the oven. Except you've got that one special trick that you've added to the crust. Good call, I totally right. forgot. I didn't want to forget that because you, when you said bacon fat, I haven't forgotten about so the bacon. So here, here I got that rendered bacon fat. I'm not gonna go nuts with this. I'm just gonna give this a little bit around the edge. This is gonna give this a little bit color. This again is made as, a, as a, it's, a, it's an artisan thing that's being made. So we want this to actually char up a little bit around the edges. Charring is desirable. Foodies love it. So again, I'm gonna give this, it's gonna give that smoky note to the edge and I'm ready to go in. All right. So now one of the things that I'm going to do, this pizza, the way it is, I'm going to go into one of the cooler spots of the oven. I'm not going to go into a really hot spot. The reason, the reason being is that this pizza, again, is going to, uh, it's a little bit thicker, it's a little bit longer, okay? If I was to put this in one of the hotter spots of the oven, what's going to happen is you're going to burn that bottom. It's going to, before the toppings are fully done, you're going to have a burnt bottom. So what I do is, uh, same thing when I do a calzone or anything that's like a stuffed bread, I want to work towards the mouth of the oven. The mouth of the oven, what happened is because you've got this draw, this draw of cold air coming in from the outside, You've got this cold air coming in. So the mouth naturally is the coldest part of this of this oven. So this will allow you to have a couple extra minutes here uh, to cook up. You could actually see the edges bubbling. Can you guys, you wanna come closer? You can take a look. You can actually see it bubbling up. And the first thing that I'm smelling out of this oven is that bacon. In your restaurant, we're a big convention hall right here. In your restaurant that you've got more of closed quarters, okay? Your customers are going to start smelling whatever you got in that oven. You're going to smell the smoke of the wood. You're going to smell that bacon. You're going to smell that, that those onions. Again, all those aromatics are dollar signs for you because it's going to cause people to want to order more food, right? That's what we're here for, selling some pizzas. So uh, let me ask you something. While it's cooking, you have this beautiful little rack here of tools. When, when you buy an oven, can you get one of these racks? Yeah, so on the Forno Bravo website, they sell a lot of different accessories, okay? So they have partners that they've teamed up with. These blue handles here, these, uh, these are uh, Italian pizza peels from a company called G-Metal or G-I Metal. They actually sell those on their website. The wooden peels I actually sell on my, on my website. I have a, you know, being from Chicago, I like to support the local guys. I have a good friend of mine who's uh, uh, wasn't able to make it to the show this year. His name's uh, Larry Melberg. He makes these beautiful handmade pizza peels right in Appleton, Wisconsin, all by hand. So uh, I had the honor. He was, uh, you know, offered me to make some peels, and uh, he made me some custom peels just for this oven. Yeah, he made some for us for Pizza Quest as well, uh, and they are beautiful. The, uh, the nice thing is he's got an array of tools to do the job. He loaded with wood. He's moving it around with the... With the, with the sort of the classic metal. How many of you here have already have wood-fired ovens or brick ovens that you work? So you know some of these long-handled tools. You need to have a long handle to get deep into the oven, pull it out. That's right, and you know, uh, you know, working with tools, again, if you're specializing in this type of cooking, if you're making an investment in an oven like this, invest in the right tools to work on it. It's like, you know, a, a guy working on a, you know, a mechanic working on a car, and uh, you know, again, he doesn't have the right tools to do his job, he's not gonna be able to do it the right way. So again, these little things, they might seem like they're, you know, they're a, a, an extra expense, or that maybe you find some cheaper, uh, you know, more value uh, items. But again, if you buy something good, you're gonna buy it for a long time, you know, and uh, you're not gonna keep rebuying these things. I'm beginning to smell a, a little bit of char happening. So these, now this tart is beginning to get close to finish. Yeah. By the way, for those who just arrived, if you have questions, follow-up questions, you can you can write to uh, or, or log on to askleopizza.com, and Leo has a he has a live feed. He can answer from anywhere in the country at any time. But if he doesn't get back to you right away, he'll check it and and write an answer back to you. What do you think? Look at that. 
I'm gonna pass this around just so you guys can smell it. Imagine this going through the dining room, okay? I'm gonna come around real slow. You can smell that. That Gruyere cheese has a distinctive aroma of its own. Isn't it phenomenal? I, that, that Gruyere, those onions, and the bacon. I mean, what else do you need? And again, this might look like those edges are, are charred up a little bit. This is because we put that little bit of extra bacon fat on there. That bacon fat has given us the flavor of the bacon, the smokiness, but it's also given us that that uh, that recreation, like we really used wood in this oven, and it's really on gas. So this is a tart flambe, a French version of a pizza, uh, a very classic French pizza, uh, and then there's very, lots of variations. You can do something that they call uh, a pisale terre. It's a uh, it's made with you know olives and possibly anchovies and other variations. But this is the the, the flambe is. It's one of those dishes that comes around every five or six years. It gets hot again in the restaurant world. We're going to make it hot again. It's going to be hot. Right? <laughs> and especially those people are watching this on the live feed, you're going to want to run out somewhere and get one of these. Thank you, Chef Leo and Peter. That is an incredible pizza. You can discover more great pizza at Chef Leo's website at askleopizza.com. You can also find Peter Reinhardt at PizzaQuest.com. That's fornobravo.com slash pizzaquest and Larry Merrillberg's great peel website, thebakersboard.com. Show a little pizza love, subscribe to the Pizza Therapy channel, pizza on earth, goodwill to all.